you'd think it'd be illegal though you know technically under the law there should be no there should not be any artisanal mining taking place in any industrial mine and yet lo and behold at most of or excuse me at most of the industrial mines there is some artisanal mining taking place in some cases it's mainly artisanal mining that is taking place and the reason is is truly what we just hit penny wages to boost production i mean if you imagine you're part of the world where there are millions of people who barely get a dollar or two a day to who are grindingly poor and will accept almost any labor agreement just to survive well you put them in a tight pit cram them there with over 10,000 people and pay them a couple dollars you have uh and they'll produce thousands of tons of cobalt per year for almost no wages and that's not illegal but it's happening it's freaking gross why are these allowed to happen i mean imagine an entire population who cannot survive without scrounging in hazardous conditions for a dollar or two a day there's all there's no alternative there the, the mines have taken over everything hundreds of thousands of people have been displaced their villages have been bulldozed to make places for mining concessions you so you have people with no alternatives really no other sources of income no livelihood and now you add a menace in many cases of an armed force pressuring people to dig parents having to make painful decisions do i send my child to school today or do we eat and if they choose the latter that means bringing all of their kids into toxic pit pits just to dig to earn an extra 50 cents maybe a dollar that okay. this okay. is a hard one this is this is a Please. We're going to we're going to go into why we need to transfer over to hemp and smartphones, computers, electric vehicles are necessities within modern within this modern world, but their rechargeable batteries are frequently powered by cobalt mine by worker or workers laboring in slave like conditions in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Yes um let me see going in going in can I... all right <clears throat> i i do apologize for butchering this name uh sahidar kirara a fellow at harvard's th chan school of public health and at the kennedy school has been researching modern day slavery human trafficking child labor for two decades he says that although the Democratic Republic of Congo has more cobalt reserves than the rest of the planet combined, there is no such thing as a clean supply chain of cobalt from the country. In his book, Cobalt Red, Kira writes that much of the Democratic Republic of Congo's cobalt is being extracted by so-called artisanal miners. These are freelance workers who do extremely dangerous la labor for equivalent of just a few dollars a day. He says, you have to walk or you have to imagine walking around some of these mine, mining areas and dialing back our clock century. People are working to are working in subhuman grinding, degrading conditions. They're using pickaxes, shovels, stretches of rebar to hack and scourge at the earth in trenches and pits and tunnels to gather cobalt and feed the up of the formal supply chain the mining industry has ravaged the landscape of the democratic republic of congo millions of trees have been cut down the air around the mine is hazy with the dust and grit, and the water has been contaminated by toxic influence from the mining process. Cobalt is toxic to the touch and to breathe. There are hundreds of thousands of poor Congolese people touching and breathing it in, or day in and out. Young mothers with babies strapped to their backs, all breathing in this toxic cobalt dust. 
Cobalt is used to manufacture almost all of the lithium ion rechargeable batteries used in the world today. Well, those outside of the Democratic Republic of Congo different between cobalt extracted by the country's high-tech industrial mining companies and that which was dug by artisanal miners. Both are fundamentally intertwined. Can I, can I interject something really quick? Go for um, it. I, I'm reading this, um, and a lot of people don't realize this. Because I know that a few months ago, I didn't know this. So I know some people also probably didn't realize this. But this is according to Wikipedia. It says the Congolian forests, uh, the Congolian rainforests are a broad belt of lowland, tropical, moist, broadleaf forests, which extend across the basin of the Congo River and tributaries in Central Africa. It says the Congolian rainforest is the world's second largest tropical rainforest after the Amazon. So, you know how we talk about the Amazon being the lungs of the earth? Well, the earth also has a, another pair of lungs, and it's in the Congo. And if they are, you know, taking these trees down, cutting these trees down, and then digging into the earth to get this cobalt, then that means that they're not just harming the Congolese people, but they are also indirectly harming us as well. Because... Not only are they digging up the cobalt in order and using slave labor in order to do this, because remember, I, I talked about this a few months back. Um, not only are they doing this and as a damaging to the Congolese people, but it's also damaging to us because they're literally chopping down our source of oxygen on this planet from the second largest rainforest on Earth. And so this is something that is extremely important. And the fact is, is that as Joey's talking about hemp, uh, it sounds too good to be true, but in reality, there are some things that are that are grown on this planet that sound too good to be true because we're so conditioned to capitalism that anything that is actually good for us, that helps us to live longer and healthier lives, it does sound that way because we're constantly told that it doesn't exist. When in reality, Mother Nature said, ha, 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 it does. Mama Key provides for us. As long as we treat her with respect, she will provide for us. Yes. Please continue. You, this is wonderful. You'd think it'd be illegal, though. You know, technically under the law, there should be no, there should not be any artisanal mining taking place in any industrial mine. And yet, lo and behold... At most of, or excuse me, at most of the industrial mines, there is some artisanal mining taking place. In some cases, it's mainly artisanal mining that is taking place. And the reason is, is truly what we just hit, penny wages to boost production. I mean, if you imagine you're part of the world where there are millions of people who barely get a dollar or two a day to who are grindingly poor and will accept almost any labor agreement just to survive? Well, you put them in a tight pit, cram them there with over 10,000 people and pay them a couple dollars you have, uh, and they'll produce thousands of tons of cobalt per year for almost no wages. And that's not illegal, but it's happening. It's freaking gross. Why are these allowed to happen? I mean, imagine an entire population who cannot survive without scrounging in hazardous conditions for a dollar or two a day. There's, a, there's no alternative there. The, the mines have taken over everything. Hundreds of thousands of people have been displaced. Their villages have been bulldozed to make places for mining concessions. You. So you have people with no alternatives, really, no other sources of income, no livelihood. And now you add a menace, in many cases, of an armed force pressuring people to dig. Parents having to make painful decisions. Do I send my child to school today or do we eat? And if they choose the latter, that means bringing all of their kids into toxic pit, pits just to dig to earn 
an extra 50 cents, maybe a dollar. That could mean wow. the difference between eating or not, JB. So we talk about like, is this slavery? Into the 21st century, this is modern day slavery. It's not the shadow ch slavery that was of the 18th century where you could buy, trade people, own or own titles over a person like property but the level of degradation the level of exploitation is on par with the old world slavery yeah the dangers of those mines jb because it's slave way or slave uh labor though the, it's dangerous many of the families who children's husbands spouses have suffered horrific injuries oftentimes digging in these large open air pits they will have pit walls collapse. Can you imagine a mountain of gravel and stone just avalanching down onto you and a bunch of people around you as everyone around you keeps on digging? There are probably about 10,000 to about 15,000 tunnels because this is where the worst of it's happening is in those tunnels. And those are dug by hand by those miners. None of them have supports. They don't have ventilation, no rock bolts, anything like that. And these tunnels collapse all the time, burying people alive. Anyone who's down there, including children. Oh it's horrific God. to imagine, JB. People yeah. just don't know what's happening down there. And it's, it's mind blowing. Like the children trafficking. There's money to be made everywhere. And you got these militias, you know, sometimes being called commandos if you're American funded, but they will adopt children, traffic children, recruit and from other parts of the Congo and they will bring them over there. They'll have to dig for and earn their dollar or two um, because that's how these militias are funded. So these children are mostly heavily exploited of all the people there they are the most vulnerable and oftentimes most trafficked and exploited in the congo and you'd yeah. think the government you'd think the government would do something jb the corruption is a huge part of the issue that corruption allows so much of these abuses to persist <clears throat> Excuse me. Of course. Um, so, um, there's the thing is, imagine the Congo is it's like a war, war torn, deeply impoverished nation that has been subjugated to generations of colonizers and ransacking going all the way back now centuries, all the way to the s slave trade, and also so, or and also. So when big foreign stakeholders come waving around their huge sums of money, it's not a long stretch to see where the corruption lies. The first democratically elected president of the Congo in 1960, Patrice Labamba, made a pledge to the countries that the immense mineral riches and resources would be used for the benefit of the people who live there and in short time within six months they had the west had him deposed assassinated chopped to pieces dissolved in acid and replaced with a bloody dictator a corrupt dictator who would keep the minerals flowing in the right direction so if you don't play ball with the power brokers at the top of the chain and with the global north just like Labamba showed what that outcome was, that will happen to whoever takes over currently. And I think that is also part of the lesson that we need to understand historically when we're talking about things like corruption. Truly, it is uh, the West in placing this colonized culture onto our communities, in particularly indigenous communities like the Congolese and the folks over here in the Turtle Island. Now, I want to touch a little bit about China going forward because this is ties right into that corruption. China cornered the global market on cobalt, 
before anyone knew what was happening. This was back in uh, 2009. Under the previous president of the Congo, Joseph Kabaya, uh, uh, pardon if, me if I got that name wrong, he signed a deal with the Chinese government for accessing to the mining concessions in exchange for developing assistance, a commitment from Ch China to build roads and some health, public clinics, schools, hospitals, things like that. But that opened the door for them. And before any anyone knew it, the Chinese owned and took seized an ownership of 15 out of the 19 um, co copper cobalt mining concessions within the Congo. So they have dominated the exit uh, of, of the mining industry. And it's not just that. They've dominated the chain all the way through to the battery level. They have about 70 to 80 percent of the refined cobalt market and probably about half of the battery market. And wow. you, you can see on our, our screen that this is the Democratic Republic of the Congo and where you see are the, the minerals of war all over there. That's why we've been in the Congo. That's why we're in the Congo. And moving forward, let's see. This is a breakdown of the minerals um, for uh, electric vehicles. I, I'm sorry, it's in French. Um, this is the best I could grab for that one. Um, this is straight cobalt. And if, as you can see, this is actually on the, the southern point of Congo. This is where the most of the, the minerals that are being extracted for the, uh, the battery production. Um, you can check into these maps at the Game of Mind. I want to say it was on uh, uh, The Guardian. Here's an overall map of the nickel deposits within um, the globe, Mama Key. And I, I, I'm pulling this up to point out that it's not just happening within the Congo. Rio Tinto, which is a mining company, um, along with a handful of other different companies at the top, are going in mostly indigenous lands. and extracting these minerals from across the globe. I, I want to point out here in Minnesota, we have a Rio Tinto uh, mine that's currently in um, post or pre-stages before it goes into the mining operation. And most of that minerals was approved by Joe Biden as he wiped away regulations protecting us from being um, exploited by these extraction companies. The the regulations that I'm talking about are the NEPTA, uh, the National Environmental Protection Act. And as Joe Biden raised the, the level of need on these minerals, he wiped away those regulations within NEPTA that allowed a democratic process for the communities to give input before these extraction companies come into our communities. Wow. This Rio Tinto mine, I mean, it's a lot like what we had discussions with any other extraction or chemical um, off, uh, hazardous company coming into our communities. And we set up meetings with the, um, the local municipality who hosts these, these uh, decision-making um, meetings and a lot of times within these meetings these decision making bodies are already have made their decisions and are already within the pockets of big business themselves going down from nickel there's our lithium deposits across the um the globe mm -hmm. our cobalt deposits across the globe Graphite, and graphite is, uh, when I talked about the hemp diamonds, that's what we're talking about, graphite. We can replace all these mines with hemp. All of the mines that you've seen on the on the maps, you can replace with hemp. 
which wow. is amazing. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further, so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much, and you can watch more of my content here. Forehead kisses, and have a beautiful day.